Hey guys, today we are going to talk about Iconic Masters. It has been some time and now we have a better understanding of where its value lies now that Black Friday is over. I have not been a fan of this set value wise. It's a very good set and the card prices are incredibly low, which is good. That's definitely a big positive in my opinion and Magic being in Walmart I mean, if you want low, low everyday prices, that's what has to happen. It is a race to the bottom, and I don't expect these boxes to recover in some time. So if you purchased it for 160, 180, 200, I don't see it hitting 200. As long as it's still being sold in Walmart, it won't hit 200. Now, the problem is we don't really know how much stock Walmart has. It's not public knowledge. Although maybe you can estimate what a distributor has and then using that you can give a very rough estimate of all the magic cards sent to local game stores. I would assume Walmart's information on this as well as other quantities is quite sec It's a secret because it's a competitive advantage for them to keep it that way. Now the set is a very good set. I'm not happy with the top heaviness of it. It's mana drain or bust. I've said that many times that it, the expected value, the how it's distributed is very important. But even now, the overall value of the set is very low compared to let's say Modern Masters 2017 where you have Liliana the Veil, Snap, and most importantly, you have five fetch lands. Those five fetch lands add a tremendous amount of value that cannot be duplicated by anything in the set. So what else do we have to talk about? Uh, this is not a long-term speculation. I would advise you to not buy boxes and hold them. It will be a losing, you will lose money uh, or you won't gain money. So let's say you buy a box of 160 with shipping, eBay fees, PayPal fees, TCG player fees, depending on how you sell it, you're looking to at least break even at 180, 190, assuming that you count your time as zero. Now, if you value your time at anything, let's say you value your time at $20 an hour and it takes you time to list it. It takes you, you have to add insurance, you have to sell it, you have to do customer service if you want to have a TCG store front. Maybe you have a website. There's a lot of additional costs that are never really considered when people are saying, oh, I made a lot of money. No, you didn't make a lot of money. You don't make any money until this is sold. A box, and this is my philosophy, and this is what MTG Finance really hates about me. If you buy something for $2 and it's called Filia, just because it hit $4 doesn't make, mean you made any money. In fact, you still lost money. And when it hits $8, that's interesting. When it hits 20, you definitely made money. Uh, you made a very good, quote, investment on your filios. The same with boxes, except boxes are a nightmare to ship. Uh, they are very, I will say this about boxes, especially the more expensive ones and tend to be older ones. I think the majority of people buying some of these older boxes are not looking to open them. They're looking for the box in that condition just to have and as a display piece, which I can appreciate. But something like this is not even a collector's item. So if you ask why is original Zendikar still 300, 400, I don't know, $500 a box, it's not because the fetch lands are in them anymore. Because you could get more fetch lands from at a cheaper box from modern 2017 and get a lot other stuff in it as well. It's because it's a collector's item. There's not much of it. There's not much of unopened boxes. Uh, it's a nice item to have to show your friends. Do I see Iconic Masters as a collector's item? Blank no. It can never be. It's a Walmart item. How can the item be collectible? It's the same when I talk to my friends who are really big into Funkos. What does Walmart exclusive Funko figure mean to me? It doesn't mean anything, right? Just having Walmart in its front name is enough to tell me, oh, no, okay, I'm the good. So um, a lot of you want to know, will there ever be a price? There's always a price where you can make money. So if Iconic Masters was 140 a box, you make money from that. That's why when Rudy says 140, 
it's very hard for him to lose money at 140. It's just really difficult to lose money at 140, but you can lose your money at 160, you can lose money at 180, and you definitely will lose money at 200. Because if you buy at 160, you, this box has to hit 200 for you to compensate for your time and something called loss of opportunity, which is also not factored into cost. When MTG Finance writes in their articles, it makes it seem like, oh, this card went from $8 to $10. Yeah, we made $2. No, you lost money. If you were to try to sell that $8 card, you're not going to get $8 for it. You, On a good day, even the $8 card became $10. On a good day, assuming there's a lot of demand, you get 50% of that. So you get like 5 bucks. So you lost $3. You spent your time. And time is the real factor. If you enjoy doing this, then yeah, then time is, that's your hobby. So it's entertainment time, which most people pay money for entertainment time. And that's why I like MTG Finance. It's fun. I enjoy doing it. So I consider it entertainment. But in no circumstance am I thinking, hmm, I'm going to make a living of this. Or I, can, I, I, can't imagine a, I can't imagine a system where you would sell magic cards, speculating on them for sometimes for many years and you would make money because your capital would have to be in like let's say it's in the dual lands which always go up and up and up but your capital is tied right so what are you doing you're just waiting there like anyway our biggest pet peeves about mtg finance is the misunderstanding of cost of opportunity the misunderstanding of shipping you don't point blank i'll be real frank with you if a card is $2 and it goes to $20, like Filia has, I still haven't made any money. I still haven't made any money. You do not make money from a speculation until you sell it. Because then you're going to get hit by the fees. Then you're going to have, if I go to GP Houston to sell it, I still have to get parking, which is expensive. I still have to spend my time. I still have to maybe negotiate prices. That's more time. I mean, that's all factors if you want to consider it. But if you're having fun, it's just fun. But it's still not from 2 to 20, right? No one's going to give you $20 for a file. That's, I mean, buy listing, maybe you get 10 if you're lucky. And I'm, I'm glad. I mean, she hit 10. Oh, she hit 10 buy list. And I think I'm good because that's, I never imagined she would be here. Um, I always imagined she would hit 5 buy list, which she did pretty easily. But 10, that's very good. It's very good for a $2, under $2 card. Anyway, bye guys.